Quadier Copeland is in the transfer portal. What does this mean for Syracuse? You are locked on Syracuse, your daily podcast on the Syracuse Orange, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So Quadier Copeland is taking his talents elsewhere, and this is a tough pill to swallow for Syracuse. And how is this team going to replace a guy like Quadier Copeland? We're going to get all into it here on Locked On Syracuse. I'm Jackson Holzer, and thank you for making us your first listen of every single day here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers join today, and you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. So what is Syracuse going to miss from a guy like Quadier Copeland who really developed this season? His freshman year, he... Only played about nine minutes a game, scored two points a game, didn't do all that particularly much. And he didn't fully blossom, but he certainly carved out a role for this season. He should have been the sixth man of the year. I stand by that take because he was a true sixth man. How do you replace a guy like Quadir Copeland, and it goes beyond the numbers. Goes beyond the numbers with a guy like him. He averaged a little less than 10 points a game. He averaged about five assists a game, and, you know, that's all fine and dandy. The passion, the energy that he played with, the cool, exciting moments that he brought to us. Every time it, you were watching Quadir Copeland, It was like you were going to the circus. Because whether it was good or bad, it was entertaining. You cannot deny that he might have been the most entertaining player on Syracuse this season. And he was a good one too. And whichever team gets Quadir Copeland, they're getting a good one. They really are. This... It's difficult. I did not envision that Copeland would be in the portal. And the reasoning for that was because I thought that Judah Mintz was going to leave. And he still might. We don't know. Could he possibly stay? We don't know. This is the transfer portal. Everything happens quickly. Some things maybe take a little bit of time. But it's a very fluid situation. That's my point. That was the word I was searching for. Not quick. Fluid. And if Judah left, then I thought Quadier Copeland had the inside track to potentially be the starting point guard for next season. And when you factor being the starting point guard, maybe a third-year leap. I know I've talked about going to Vegas and getting that extra NIL money. I thought Copeland... Whether I thought he was ready or not, was going to be the starting point guard for next season. And that's just not going to be the case anymore. I guess you could come back from the transfer portal. You can come back. And I think most of us would welcome him back. But judging from what he posted on his Instagram, and how he's basically thanking the fans and everything on Twitter. I don't think that he's coming back. I think we have seen the last of Quadir Copeland in an orange uniform. Going to miss the passion, the energy. I was on the floor for the North Carolina game, and just the way that he interacted with the fans even during the game. 
I mean, he's staring at everyone on the floor, hyping everyone up. I remember towards the end of the game during the free throws, he was going like this. For those that are listening, I'm kind of patting down both of my hands, trying to tell everyone to just relax. Such a fun and exciting player to watch, to cover. And who can forget his best moment, maybe of his entire basketball career, but certainly in an orange uniform, the game-winning shot from the left wing to beat Miami in what might be the highlight of the season. If not, it's certainly top three. It was an incredible shot. And I think that was the moment where, at least for my sake, I thought that Copeland had arrived. I thought he arrived when he hit that shot against Miami. He was a spark plug off the bench. Yeah, guys, I, I have to I have to be straight with you. I don't know how you replace a guy like Whitey or Copeland beyond the numbers. I think you can go into the portal and find someone who averages 10 points a game. You can go into the portal and find someone who averages five assists a game. I don't think Syracuse can go into the portal and find a guy who can come off the bench, be get a vote for ACC Defensive Player of the Year, and just provide that energy and that passion that for a lot of the season, Syracuse didn't really have. The point that I'm getting at is he was a heart and soul type of player. He was a glue guy type of player. And you don't just find those guys off the scrap heap. You don't. You don't. I wish Quadir Copeland nothing but the best. I hope that he's making the best decision for himself. And by the way, this goes for everyone who's coming in, who's leaving. Time and place for criticism. Quadir Copeland. So long, my friend. Now, how does Syracuse attempt to replace a guy like Quadir Copeland? This week's March Madness Bracket Highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest. Just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs, these guys were able to take it to the next level. The Yukon Huskies can only be described as an armada. This top-seeded team is as hardcore as it gets out there, so it's no wonder they've landed the top overall seed in the NCAA Tournament. They're one of the favorites to win it all, despite four of the six Power Six Conference champions standing in their way in the East region. Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Amazon Fire TV is the place I get the top streaming apps and channels for movies, TV, for Syracuse games, especially next season and the NCAA tournament, which is coming up around the corner. Fire TV is your destination for sports, from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels lets you dive into all the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on all the latest in the world of sports. March Madness, NBA, MLB, and lots more, not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. 
To learn more, visit www.amazon.com slash locked on fire TV. The Locked On College Basketball Bracket Breakdown Show is now available on the Locked On College Basketball Podcast. Experts Andy Patton and Isaac Shade will break down their brackets and discuss everything that you need to know to fill out a winning bracket and prepare for this year's NCAA tournament. Find the Locked On Bracket Breakdown now on the Locked On College Basketball Podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back, everyone, in a Locked On Syracuse. I'm Jackson Holzer. Quadir Copeland is in the transfer portal as we speak, and it's going to be very difficult to for Syracuse to replace a guy like this guy. And again, it goes beyond the numbers with him. So what does this mean for Syracuse going forward? How exactly do they plan to attack? What should they do for the plan Is it possible that Judah Mintz is staying after all? I know in my prediction, I said that Quadir Copeland was going to leave, but I just have to address this. Or not, I said Quadir Copeland was going to stay and Judah Mintz was going to leave. But then Judah Mintz changed his Twitter bio or photo, if you will, to just a picture of himself in a Syracuse jersey instead of with Quadir Copeland. Those two were apparently great friends. I guess Judah could have easily changed it to something else. Am I reading too much into it? I don't know. Maybe it's wishful thinking. Judah coming back versus Quidair Copeland would certainly be a net positive. So that's one way to do it. But as far as him himself, Syracuse is also in the running apparently for Harvard guard Malik Mack. Mac, I think, would be more of a Judah Mintz replacement. You're looking at another scoring type point guard here. He averaged 17 points and five assists a game. He has a, a little bit more of a three point shot than Judah Mintz. He shot 34% last season from the three point line. He also played with Donnie Freeman in high school. So, Donnie Freeman coming in, Malik Mack from the Ivy League, joined forces perhaps. But again, Malik Mack is not a Quadir Copeland replacement. They're two completely different players. Copeland's got more size, more length. Mack is a little bit on the smaller end. So it's it's not a, you can't, they're not the same, but still a guard in Mack, guard in Copeland, I guess. There's also Chance Westry. Now, I don't care what anyone says. I don't. Chance Westry can be a really good player. He absolutely can be a really good player. And he can totally be capable of replacing a guy like Whittier Copeland. And he was a great high school player. But he has played 11 games in two years. And he had a very minimal role in those 11 games when he was at Auburn before he transferred to Syracuse and suffered another season and suffered a season ending injury for the for the orange. He hasn't been healthy. He has not really shown anything. So it is very difficult. I guess what I'm trying to say is two things can be true. You can believe in Chance Westry's potential and him being able to replace a guy like Quidier Copeland next season, but also be quite nervous because he's played 11 games in two years and has not had a substantial role in college basketball yet. So I'm a little bit skeptical on Westry being the guy. Just don't know. So, those are just a few possibilities. We'll, we'll, we'll go deeper into, you know, types of players. I mean, really what you're looking for is glue guys. Who are guys that can, I guess, come off the bench, play good defense, provide energy, passion throughout the lineup? Being willing to accept 
any possible role, it can be difficult to be the sixth man because the sixth man on a team usually should be a starter, but they're not starting for whatever reason, and they're not getting the most playing time for whatever reason. And maybe that's ultimately why Quadir Copeland is leaving, but you're going to need another guy. They're going to need another guy who is selfless, just like what Eric Copeland was, who might be willing to take on a lesser role, even though they're capable of more. It's not going to be easy. You can find someone who can get you 10 and 5, but I don't know if you can replace what made Copeland special. But those are just a few possibilities of where Syracuse can go from here. It's not all doom and gloom. It's not all doom and gloom. This is just... At the at this moment, this episode is released. It's only day two of the transfer portal. Still plenty to come. And hey, plenty happened yesterday for Syracuse. That's not just Quidier Copeland. A couple other players officially announced that they are in the transfer portal. That they're in the transfer portal. And we're going to discuss them right after this. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's $200 to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. And hey, with the NCAA tournament coming up, think about all the possibilities. You got to hope, first of all, that Syracuse is in the tournament next season so you can bet on them. But anyways, so many thrilling and exciting contests to come, and you can win big, especially with this deal. And I know I'll be cashing in on it, and you should too. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, and now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. Welcome back, everyone, in the Locked On Syracuse. I'm Jackson Holzer, your team every day here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Quadir Copeland in the transfer portal. How does Syracuse replace a guy like him? We've we've talked in length about it, what, what Syracuse is going to miss from Copeland and how exactly they might plan to attack in getting different guys from the portal. Maybe Judah Mintz will stay. Who knows? But we do have more concrete news regarding the transfer portal and how it affects Syracuse. First and foremost, this was kind of a formality, and that is that Benny Williams is officially in the transfer portal. Williams was a guy who had all the potential in the world coming to Syracuse, and he just never quite lived up to the hype. He never quite lived up to the hype. He... I know people are confused by it, but he was thrown off the team, but he did not yet enter the transfer portal. And that means in theory, he could have been let back onto the team. He was not thrown out from the university. He was thrown out from the basketball team. There's a big difference there. That's why there was maybe a little bit of confusion as to why Benny Williams was in the transfer. They thought he was already in the transfer portal. Now he officially is. He just... He had an issue in the beginning of the season, which ultimately got him suspended for the first couple of games. So that wasn't a good start to a pretty much make or break year three for Benny Williams. If he couldn't take that next step in year three, it just, you you kind of figured that nothing was ever really going to happen for him. And then against Wake Forest, he, he lost it. He lost his mind. And I think, you know, he had a moment of insanity where he gets a technical foul and he bumps into Coach Autry and then skips the handshake line. He lost his mind. 
And from then on, he was he was thrown out of the he was thrown off the team just a couple of days later. And he's now in the transfer portal officially. I don't know where Benny Williams is going to go, where he's going to be able to reach his potential. But nevertheless, I I hope that he finds a way to get his career back on track. We wish him nothing but the best here. Moving on. Justin Taylor in the transfer portal. This one was, rather than a formality like Williams, this was expected. I think that Justin Taylor had run his course here at Syracuse. He just wasn't playing good enough. He wasn't playing good enough. Whether you think he's good enough or not to play in a Power 6 conference, he was not playing good enough. And I think he just said to himself, I, I'm, I don't know this for sure, but he wanted to move on. He just wants to move on and people might say, do the fans have any part of it? I, I'd hope not. I'd hope that he's chasing it more towards maybe securing more NIL money, getting better opportunity elsewhere, and maybe potentially pro potential if he can ever get there. Maybe it is a factor. I don't know. He got a lot of criticism. But one thing you can't question about Justin Taylor is that he never gave up and that he always gave his best. And there's a reason why Coach Autry said he would take a bullet for a guy like Justin Taylor. Because he put in the work. He did his best. He struggled for most part of the season. But he kept his head down. He kept working. He had a few moments. But ultimately, it just doesn't, it didn't seem like he ever really worked. He didn't work this year. He showed potential in year one. He had that crazy game against Bryant. And I thought that he was the second coming, that he was going to be the next, I don't know, the next great shooter of Syracuse, if you will. He was going to be this great shooter that this team really needed. He was borderline 40% his freshman year. It didn't work out. It didn't work out. Is the loss of Justin Taylor a crusher for Syracuse? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I think this is a situation where this will probably work out for the best for both parties. I think Taylor will find a place where he can get a nice opportunity. He can refine his game. He can get out of his shooting slump because we know he can be a good shooter. And I think Syracuse is going to find an upgrade in the transfer portal. That's an extra scholarship spot that just opened up. And I think you can find someone better on the wing. I think you definitely can. Even if it's not a starter, at least someone who can back up, you know, play a backup role. Probably will provide more next season than what Justin Taylor was able to provide for this year. Again, best of both worlds for both parties. We wish Justin Taylor nothing but good luck, good fortune down the road. Didn't work here. Hopefully it works somewhere else for the kid. So that's it for Transfer Portal news that we know officially. We know officially, and I promise you there's plenty more to come. I guarantee you I'm going to release this video and something massive is going to happen. I already know it. It's going to happen like 20 minutes after I release this. But hey, I got to do what I got to do. And that's sports. Plan for tomorrow is to is to grade Judah Mintz's season. But, you know, Quadir Copeland entered the transfer portal and maybe someone else will enter the transfer portal tomorrow. So maybe that will be put on hold. But that's the plan for tomorrow. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. If you liked it, 
click that like button. And if you really liked it, subscribe to the channel. And more importantly, turn on those notifications so you can know right away when I'm dropping the next Locked On Syracuse podcast. I'm Jackson Holzer, signing off until tomorrow, and let's hope that Syracuse can get some big fish in the transfer portal.